It's a sound Alistair Green has heard for the past 20 years. It's a sound that he's grown to love, especially since it gives him a purpose. It was very motivating to be able to work in something that everybody told me wasn't possible. But that's not the dream he had 20 years ago. I have planned on actually, I'd like to have gone to school in the interior for avalanche control and then just sort of live my life in the mountains and be a ski bump. It was May long weekend in 1991. After camping and drinking, it was time to head home. But instead of heading home, Green ended up in the hospital after a single car accident. Driving too fast, you know, it's one of those things that'll never happen to me. And then woke up three weeks later in the hospital in Vancouver. He had a broken neck and was told he wouldn't be able to move. It was pretty much like getting hit by a truck, I guess. Like it was, my life was over. It was very, very difficult to see any bright spot. You know, was, yes, you're lucky to be alive, but it was what kind of life was I going to be living? After two years of hospital and rehab, he moved back to the island. He met Gary Curry, who was going through exactly what he was going through. And one day as they hung out, they found their future. We um, saw a documentary on Martin Shadley and his beluga whales and thought, let's get a couple of pieces of soapstone, get some chisels and you know, see if we can carve. They carved and haven't stopped since. But of course, doing this as a quadriplegic is not easy. Just take a look at how much work it takes to put on a splint he created so he could actually carve and file. It takes a focus and it's definitely, you know, it's patience and it's love and it's a dedication. Green and Curry also started the Vancouver Island Society of Disabled Artists. Not only do they create such beautiful pieces of art, but they also teach students who may be in the same situation as them. It's fun to see the excitement that they get, you know, and the passion that they start to bring to themselves. And it helps me feel creative and stay creative, you know, and use a lot of their energy and, you know, enthusiasm in order to drive my work forward. I really enjoy it and uh, I find I am fairly good at it and it kind of comes comes fairly easily to me. Robin Unger was living in Kelowna at the time of his accident. It was 2007. He decided to go jump in the lake after work with some friends. I checked the water. It seemed like it was uh, deep enough and dove in and uh, hit something under the water, broke my neck. My friends had to drag me into shore. After being in the hospital for eight months, he moved to Victoria. Not knowing what to do with his life, Unger would head over to play wheelchair rugby. I learned through them, learned about Alistair and uh, Gary, who ha run the studio. And so I got in touch with them. And basically, since ever since then, I've been uh, coming around a couple times a week. Just as a guidance line there. Just to try and keep it flat around the base. Yeah. Before his accident, he was working hard labor jobs and thinking about going to school. Today, he says this is hard labor. You just have to stand around when they're cutting the big pieces of stone to get a glimpse. Now that I've kind of got a bit of a, a purpose, it, it, it does feel really good to have, uh, have somewhere to go, you know, every day or times a week. When these pieces end up in the art gallery, there is no disability. It's just the art. It's an equal playing field. Like, yes, it takes us longer and it's a lot harder, but at the end of the day, there's no, there's no, I guess, difference and there's no, can you say, you can't, the disability disappears. In Victoria, I'm Shetta Singh.